Good morning, fifth grade. We are ready for math lesson 159. This morning we're going to start off with some concept cards, and also I have some cards with decimals, with, and we're going to use those to review how to round our decimals to the nearest tenths and hundredths places. So let's first of all get started with these. Go ahead and try to answer as many as you can correctly, and then I will show you the answer, and we'll move on to our decimals. So one millennium equals how many years? 1,000. One century equals how many years? 100. Whoops, this is the wrong way. <laughs> One year equals 12 months. One year equals how many days? 365. One week equals how many days? Seven. One day equals how many hours? 24. One hour equals how many minutes? 60. One minute equals how many seconds? 60. One yard equals how many feet? Three. One foot equals how many inches? 12. Deca means 10. Hecto, 100. Kilo, 1,000. Milla, 1,000th. Centa, one hundredth, deca, one tenth, one peck equals how many quarts? Eight. One bushel equals how many pecks? Four. One pound equals how many ounces? Sixteen. One ton equals how many pounds? Two thousand. One mile equals how many feet? 5,280, one mile equals how many yards? 1,760, one meter equals how many decimeters? 10, one meter equals how many centimeters? 100, one meter equals how many millimeters? 1,000, one kilometer equals how many meters? 1,000. One hectometer equals how many meters? One hundred. One decameter equals how many meters? Ten. One quart equals how many pints? Two. One gallon equals how many quarts? Four. One pint equals how many cups? Two. One tablespoon equals how many teaspoons? Three. One cup equals how many fluid ounces? Eight. One pint equals how many fluid ounces? Sixteen. One square foot equals how many square inches? 144. One square yard equals how many square feet? Nine. One square mile equals how many acres? 640, and one acre equals how many square feet? 43,560. Okay, so we have some decimals here. Now, first of all, this decimal, we want to round it to the hundredths place. Now, remember, if we want to round a decimal to the hundredths place, we have to have a decimal after it, because then this is our digit that tells us whether or not we need to round this up or keep this the same. So this is our determining digit. So we're going to round the hundredths place by looking at the thousandths place. This one, we would just round it to zero because this is a one, zero hundredths, if that's even a decimal. Um, okay, we can't use this one. So let's round this one to the hundredths place as well. This is our determining digit, which tells us that this should be rounded to one hundredths. Let's round this to the hundredths place. We're rounding this number. This is our determining digit. So what would we, we be rounding our number to? One hundredths. Let's round this to the tenths place. This is the tenths place, so this is the number we change if we change a number. One is our determining digit. Because it's less than five, we keep this two tenths. And let's just round this one yet. We have tenths place, this is our determining digit. So what would we round the tenths place to? One tenth. Okay, in our lesson today, we're talking about repeating decimals. 
Um, so first of all, I have some fractions here on the board. Um, on this first fraction, we have 3 over 11. So we talked yesterday about we can change fractions to decimals by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So we're going to go ahead and do that for this fraction. We're going to change it to a decimal. So to do that, we're going to make 3 our dividend. We're going to make 11 our divisor. Now we have to put a decimal point here and annex a 0 because 11 cannot go into 3. Now how many times does 11 go into 30? 2 times. Subtract 22. We have 8. We have to bring down another 0 because it did not terminate. So how many times does 11 go into 80? 7 times. Subtract 77. We have, we're left with a 3. So we need to annex another 0. Now, 30 divided by 11 is what? That would be 2. So we subtract 22. We have 8. Did not terminate yet, so we're going to annex another 0. Bring it down. 80 divided by 11 is 7. So we have 77. Subtract again, and we are left with 3. It did not terminate, so we're going to annex another 0. And we divide 30 by 11 is 2. And if we subtract 22 from 30, we're left with 7 again. Sorry, we're left with 8 again. So we're going to bring down another 0. And then 80 divided by 11 is 7. So then we subtract 77. Now, do you notice something about what's happening here? Our problem is not terminated. And our numbers here are just the same over and over again. 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7. Now what would happen if we would just keep going and keep dividing and keep dividing and keep dividing? What would happen? Our, our problem would never terminate. It would go on forever. Our answer would just be 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7. That would be our quotient. Let's put our decimal point in here. Now, what we call this is a repeating decimal. Okay? Now, when we have decimals like this, um, we can go ahead and write, um, we could just write, since we know that it keeps going on, um, we could just stop as soon as we know that the numbers are going to keep going on. We can just stop. So let's just back up here because 2, 7 just keeps repeating. And we can just put dot, dot, dot after it. Or another way to show a repeating decimal is just to put like a bar over the numbers that are repeating. So in this case, 2 and 7 would just keep repeating. So we're putting a bar over them, which means repeating. Okay? Now let's try this for another fraction here. We have 7 over 12. So we're going to go 7 divided by 12. So I'm just going to divide here rather quickly. Take 12 into 70. Uh, let's go 5 here. 12 times 5 equals 60. Subtract and we have 10. We need to annex another 0. It did not terminate. 8. We have 96. Subtract. We're left with 4. Annex another 0. We have 3. Let's just get rid of this so it's not in our way. Um, 36. We're left with 4. Okay, annex another 0. It did not terminate yet. Uh, we have 40. 12 goes into 40. 3 times again. So 36. Subtract. Annex another 0 because it's not terminating. Now, are you catching on to what's happening here? We have another repeating decimal. Our whole quotient is not repeating, but we do have a repeating decimal. What is the number that's repeating? You see the 3 is repeating, right? So let's just back up here and erase um, to the first 3. And we could, um, let's put our bar over our repeating answer here. And we know only the 3 repeats, so in this one we only put the bar above the 3 because that's the only repeating part of our answer, okay? Now let's go ahead and do 2 over 9 yet. So we have 2 divided by 9. Put a decimal point and annex a 0 there. 
Um, 9 goes into 22 times. So subtract here. I'm just going to divide rather quickly. Now, do you see what's happening here already? It is not terminating, and our answer continues to be 0.222, okay? So we could um, put our bar above the 2, or we could just write 0 0.2 and put our repeating bar above that to show that the 2 is repeating. So a fraction that divides out evenly is called a terminating decimal, but when you have a fraction that just keeps on going with the same numbers forever, it's called a repeating decimal. And as we've said, you can show that with a repeating decimal bar above the numbers that are repeating. Or you can put uh, three dots after your numbers that are repeating as well. Now, let's talk about some decimals. We talked about decimals yesterday that you want to remember for the future. Decimals that you'll see more often. And it's good to know... Um, the fraction and decimal, it's good to know what the decimal is for the fraction by memory. So look at the page from yesterday's lesson on page 285, the box where it shows the decimals and the box in today's lesson where it shows decimals. And we're just going to go over some ways to remember those here. Yeah. So turn to yesterday's lesson. Look at the box. Now the first three decimals, we have one half, one fourth, and three fourths. Now, a way to remember their decimals is when you think about money. One half of a dollar is 50 cents, and the decimal is 5 tenths. One fourth of a dollar is 25 cents, and the decimal is 25 hundredths. Three fourths of a dollar is 75 cents, and the decimal is 75 hundredths. Now, the next ones, um, we have the... The, des the fractions with a denominator of 5, the decimals are double the numerator. So 1 fifth, the decimal is 2 tenths, which is double the, one, the numerator, 1. 2 fifths, 4 tenths, 3 fifths, 6 tenths, 6 tenths, and 4 fifths, 8 tenths. So the decimal is double the numerator when the denominator is 5. Um, 1 third and 2 thirds, so turn to today's lesson. One third and two third, if you would make those um, a fraction that is not reduced, you would make them a greater fraction, um, maybe multiply both numerator and denominator by three. Um, so you, instead of having one third, you would have three ninths, and instead of having two third, you would have six ninths. Now this, this gets a little more detailed, especially when, yeah, we're going over this just quick at the end of our lesson, but get what you can here. So... If we have one-third and two-third, our decimals in our lesson today, and we would change them to a higher decimal, like three-ninth and six-ninth. Um, now, just something to remember, a proper fraction that has a denominator of nine, the, the decimal is the numerator repeating. So three-ninth, for example, the decimal is three-tenth, three repeating, or Six ninth, the decimal is six repeating, six tenth. Okay, so if you make one third and two third um, a greater fraction, like with greater numbers, make it three ninth and six ninth, it's just the numerator repeating. Okay, um, that's just kind of a few things to help you remember these if they are helpful. But we're going over them rather fast, so just get what you get what you can here. Um, now, those with the denominator of 8 turn back to yesterday's lesson. Notice the pattern for 1 8 is 1 and 25 thousandths. For 3 8, it's 3 and 375 thousandths. 5 8 is 625 thousandths. And 7 8 is 875 thousandths. So notice they have like 25, 75, 25, 75. And for 1 8 and 3 8, the first number is the numerator. And for 5 8 and 7 8, the first number is one more than the numerator. Hopefully you can follow along and at least catch some of what we're going over here. Um, since it's kind of a lot we're talking about at the same time with how to remember these specific decimals. Okay, so the, yeah, like I said, the decimals in the box in today's lesson and yesterday's lesson are good to learn by memory the fractions and decimals so that you don't have to always divide to figure them out. Um, but we'll learn them with time, so give yourself time 
hopefully you got some of what we what we got here. But main thing for today's lesson is repeating decimals. If you have something repeating, go ahead and put your bar over it and don't just continue on because it will go on forever. Work your lesson carefully. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in language class.